All right, we're back live and in person uh, from Horniman Stadium and Heidelberg's campus here in Tiffin, Ohio. Uh, the uh, Crestview Knights have a 7-0 lead over the Calvert Senecas. Got about a minute left here in the first quarter of play. Uh, high school playoff football. Uh, number two, Calvert, taking on the number 15 Crestview team. Penix throws it, knocked away by Schumacher. Uh, Dominic Helmsetter, Zach Dillon, Connor Roush here. Uh, again, we'd like to apologize for our uh, technical difficulties here. Uh, I think we've got them figured out. Uh, picture looks good. Uh, I think we can hear each other. <laughs> I think um, we can. So those are all good signs that uh, we might be able to uh, uh, watch and uh, listen and uh, talk about tonight's uh, great high school playoff matchup between a couple of teams that uh, they just want to pick up another win. All right, so Crestview forced to punt it away. Calvert's going to get it back deep in their own area inside the 10-yard line, but uh, does not matter as uh, Calvert defense coming up big and able to stop Crestview. I uh, just want to thank uh, Klaus Electric, uh, keeping us connected with our weather report. Uh, it's about 70 degrees and gorgeous uh, from Tiffin, Ohio. Uh, so thank you, Klaus Electric for keeping us plugged in to tonight's weather. All right, just another quick rundown here. Uh, Calvert, uh, they got those blue jerseys on, Crestview with the uh, white jerseys. Uh, and both teams uh, coming in, uh, supporting a loss in Week 10. So they're uh, looking to bounce back here in Week 11 with playoffs. Run back. And it's stripped away again. Rumback had the ball stripped away as he was carrying it. I think uh, Calvert's able to hang on to it, but uh, seems to be a common trend here for the Knights' defense. And you can see Rumback not very happy with it. Just kind of rolls off to the left side, and yeah, they just go after the football. Don't even try to take him down. Of course, that's how the first turnover, how Crestview got their first turnover earlier in the quarter. Something to keep an eye on. Ball security. Schultz looking to pass. Connects. Yeah, looks. Yeah, Calvert receiver knocked down. Uh, I think it was it's Cal Rumbach. Warneman. It was a Cal Warneman. It's looked like it might have been Rumbach. Well, I thought it. I. <laughs> yeah, I think oh, it was so Rumbach again. Yeah, Rumbach. So uh, hey. After the first quarter of play here from Tiffin, Ohio, the Knights have a 7-0 lead over the Senecas. We'll be right back here at Heart of Ohio Sports. Keep it locked in. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Serving local employers and businesses for over 30 years, Pyramid Recruiting Offices has been operating out of that familiar A-frame building located at 373 North Washington Street since 1988. Call Pyramid Recruiting today at 419-447-0455. Pyramid Recruiting Offices. Tiffin's only locally owned and operated job placement service. Let Heather Hunker, travel advisor with Magical Moments Vacation, take the stress out of booking your next getaway. Specializing in family and group vacations, as well as adults only trips, Heather can also help you with booking your dream destination wedding. Most trips are planned at no additional cost to you, and you'll have her support both pre-travel and in destination with every step of the way. Book your next dream getaway now. Heather Hunker, travel advisor with Magical Moments Vacations. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Well, welcome back to Heart of Ohio Sports Horniman Stadium in at Heidelberg University on campus. All right, so let's uh, take you for a short little walk down first quarter lane uh, as uh, the Knights have a 7-0 lead. So far tonight. All right, so uh, we've had two turnovers uh, tonight. Our pit stop turnover update. Uh, we've had a turnover fumble from Calvert, fumble from Crestview as Calvert takes the ball and pushes it right up the middle and is stopped dead in their tracks. So we've had two turnovers tonight, a pit stop. Uh, we had a Calvert and Crestview exchanging fumbles. But wouldn't you know it, Crestview on that second fumble, uh, they're able to punch it in right around the four-minute marker. Three-yard scamper by uh, quarterback Penix as he's able to put it in there and get our relax and revive touchdown of the quarter 
here from Horniman Stadium. And really, that's that's the action tonight as um, Calvert is forced to punt the ball away again. And it goes out of bounds around midfield there. Now, of course, uh, Crestview, they've got three flags on the uh, on the night. So uh, three penalties kind of holding their offense back a little bit. Calvert, they've committed one penalty. Uh, and uh, Steinmetz signs, making sure that we keep that uh, posting correct for you tonight. All right, you can see Coach Reeser there. Clearly not the kind of start he wanted. Uh, I was talking to him before uh, the game started, and he said he hopes his boys come out and they play angry. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe he looks a little impatient at the moment. Uh, but at seven points is nothing. This is a big scoring team here, the Calvert Senecas, uh, and uh, they can do something with it. But right now it's Leith who's doing something with it as, uh, as Crestview just keeps pounding the ball away with number 32, Braxton Leith. Their stud running back. Yeah, stud is right. They've been running him all season really hard, and, and he is the focal point of this offense. And uh, pick up a first National Bank of Sycamore first down for the Knights. Penix going deep, touchdown shot, and he's got it. Touchdown, Crestview, as nobody's going to relax but the – this offense certainly has revived themselves. It's now 13 to 0. Knights got a big time lead. Well, one on one on the outside, the receiver beats his man. Crestview up early. Evan Sowers making the touchdown catch. You see him right there on the sideline. <laughs> oh, what a catch it was for Crestview. So PAT is up. It's good. It's 14 to 0. Crestview commanding lead over Calvert here early in the second quarter. Take a break. We'll be right back. I'm Zach Dillon, and you're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Federal Credit Union, your premier financial institution in Seneca County since 1952. Your community, your legacy, federally insured NCUA. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports, the pulse of the Buckeye State. At Heart of Ohio Sports, it's obvious. The first thing that comes to mind is sports. But we do a lot more than just cover live sporting events. When we want to watch our highlights from last night's game, there's only one place we go, Heart of Ohio Sports. UIS Insurance and Investments, your hometown agency, providing a full range of insurance and financial services with a local touch. Contact your homegrown agent, Sam Shelt Palm, for a professional review today at 419-447-4242, extension 1132. It's time for high school football on Heart of Ohio Sports. Welcome back, Heart of Ohio Sports here. Crestview, moments ago, just put up their second touchdown of the evening. I'd like to thank Relax and Revive Salon and Spa for keeping us connected. And uh, we've got another penalty down there on the field. Steinmetz signs and Graphic Inc. penalty. That's the fourth penalty of the evening for Crestview. As it's going to push them back just a little bit there, and uh, they're going to re-kick this here in the second quarter of play. 14-0, Crestview lead over the Calvert Senecas. Senecas, a home playoff game here on the campus of Heidelberg University. And uh, had a fantastic football season. Uh, only loss of the year was last week against an equally undefeated Hopewell Out and Chieftain team. So bounces around. Billy Klaus snatches it. He's got a little space taken down around the 30-yard line. And we'll have a chance to see this Calvert offense. Of course, our Lee's keys to the game. Cal Warnament, Jacob Rumbach. We mentioned them at the beginning of the broadcast. 
And after a few technical difficulties, we've kind of come back here. Uh, and uh, one thing that uh, Calvert's had some difficulties with here is holding on to that football. Rumbach, uh, he's had the ball stripped away twice, lost one fumble, able to get back on a second one there. So uh, our keys to the game, somebody uh, to keep an eye on and watch. And that's something that's, that's out of the ordinary for sure because he had zero fumbles all year and two already in this one. Under 11 minutes here, Schultz slings it and just knocked away. It looks like they're trying to set up a screen pass to Cal Warnament. Just nowhere to go with it. That's exactly right. Warnament unable to find the soft spot in the defense there. And the edge rushers on both sides for the Knights in to pressure that pass. Yeah, Knights just kind of mucking up the middle of the football field right there. Not giving Calvert any opportunity set some things up here so now it's going to be second and 10 from the 30 yard line for the Seneca's offense keep an eye on those three split out at the top of the screen pump fake Schultz and overthrows Rumbach and uh, it's going to be incomplete as I think it was supposed to be a quick hitch to Rumbach and uh, just again nowhere to go All right, third and 10, Zach. It's uh, gut check time here because uh, two-score deficit. Uh, You've got to start stringing some first downs together here so that this game doesn't get away from you early on. Schultz tipped at the line, nearly picked off. Klaus, he's got it. First down and more. Excellent eye-hand coordination by Billy Klaus. Yeah, Klaus, I think, surprised himself that he was able to bring this one down right over the defensive back who read it mm. perfectly just unable to bring it in and Klaus makes the most of it finds the outside picks up a big first down certainly the strength of this uh, Calvert offense is rushing the ball with Rumbach and Warnament so throwing it so much uh, you see the ball tipped around there hopefully uh, get some good luck Schultz looking again overthrows Schumacher the intended receiver That'll bring up second and 10 for Calvert. Yeah, going pass happy, not exactly their bread and butter. Uh, Schultz uh, can be a little streaky as a passer. When he gets into a rhythm, he can be downright deadly, though. Exactly. Keep in mind, he does have a cannon. He has a great arm. Um, they like to put him in motion, running him out out of the boot to the left or the right. You're right, he is, is streaky for sure. But uh, very athletic. He can run the ball, too, and we've seen that a few times this season. So let's see what happens. Warneman gets the ball, hit in the backfield, and then hit again and taken down for no gain. Bo Eggleson with the tackle. See an injured knight hobbling off the field, Aiden Martin. So with that loss on the play, it's going to be third and roughly 15 for Calvert. And uh, they might have to air it out here because um, Crestview defense, uh, they've come ready to play tonight. 14-0, Knights over the Senecas. Senecas hoping to keep this alive. Oh, Warneman hit immediately as he catches the football. Kellen Putman ending it. What a hit by Kellen Putman. You see the young man there. He's like, I feel pretty good. Let me uh, get this punt. Yeah, Putman was the Ooh. defensive back on the far side of the field that was almost able to make the play on that Klaus running catch. You know, Putman, uh, if he would have looked up, he might have been able to take that to the house. The ball was right there. It was a bang-bang kind of play. But uh, any way you look at it, Calvert's going to have to kick the ball away and uh, – Yep. YLFCU timeout down on the field here. Knights with a 14 to 0 lead. 9-11 left here in the first half of play and Seneca's uh they want to get on the same page here and uh so far uh, this offense just um hasn't really clicked, Zach. 
Yeah, there's been nothing going in the run game, which is Calvert's, obviously, like you said earlier, it's their bread and butter. It's what they do well, the one-two punch of Warnament and Rumbach, and they haven't been able to establish that. Credit to this night's defense. They've been playing very well. Their defensive backs in particular during pass coverage have been locked down. So, big punt coming up for Calvert. Crestview, once again, should look to put themselves in pretty good field position. No question. Uh, so, fourth and 20 from the 43-yard line. Rumbach kicks the ball away. And it's going to be Putman. Fair catch. And we'll get another look at this Knights offense. As, uh, as they come back out onto the field. All right, the Knights offense, they're going to come back out on the 19-yard line here. And uh, so far, uh, what have they done? Well, let me tell you. The Knights have put up a 20-yard touchdown catch in the second quarter. They got a three-yard touchdown run in the first quarter, and that's given them 14 points. Calvert, zero. Leith, right side, still moving. First down and more. Number 32, Braxton Leith, who's been leading the charge for this Knights offense. Yeah, Leith, only a sophomore but again, he has been playing very well this season. Leith again on the left side. He's going to be thrown to the ground by Cal Warneman. Short gain, second and long for Crestview. All right, second and nine. Eight minutes here left in the second quarter. Penix going deep. He's got a man through his hands, though, just not able to bring it in. Number 14, Wren Sheets, the intended receiver, and he had it there. Yeah, beautiful ball over the middle. One-on-one -on -one coverage. Credit. credit uh, excuse me, credit there to Kimmett. Playing it well over the top. Third and nine for Crestview as they look to pick up this first down and keep their drive alive. They got three split out the top of your screen. Leith in motion. Pump fake, rolling to his left. Quarterback keeper, he's gone. Flag on the field as Penix crosses midfield. So it could be a first down depending on what this flag's all about. Well, looking in the area of the flag, number 66, Connor Sheets, just had his head down. That's exactly who it's going to be on. Steinmetz signs and Graphic Inc. flag on the field, and that's against Crestview, their fifth of the evening. And that's the one thing that's kind of slowed them down so far tonight as it's pushed them back and cost them valuable yards. So Garrett Yinger, not Sheets, the guilty party. So instead of the third and nine and able to convert on a great scramble by Penix, the penalty pushes them back 10 yards. They got to repeat third down, and now it's third and 19 from the 24-yard line. Calvert's certainly going to want to get after him here, put a little pressure on this night's offense. Let's see what they come up with. Penix, quick hitch. Able to oh. connect with his receiver there, Eggleston. And he's going to be knocked out. 30-yard line, fourth down. Take a look at this move right here. Number 22, John Shoemaker, is going to be that outside cornerback. He engages the block, makes an incredible spin move into the tackle. Right here at the bottom of your screen, right at the 30-yard line. Engage right Boom. there, spin off. Yeah. Able to keep that one as a loss. Or, well, not a loss, but... 
short of the the original marker. <laughs> Fourth and eleven. Uh, I think that's what you're getting at there. They got a long way to go. Is the punt? It's going to be a fair catch, and it's tipped away. And Crestview's got it. Oh no! Godfrey bounced off his hands. Crestview scoops it up, and they've got the ball back. It doesn't get much worse than that if you're a punt returner in terms of uh, the feeling that he has right now. Godfrey, under it, had time, and, and just muffed it. Wow. That's the second, third fumble of the evening for Calvert. Second lost fumble. And this is a huge one because it gives Crestview, Crestview the ball back. <laughs> at the 35-yard line. Uh, and they, they exactly flipped the field. Yeah. Again, these are the kind of pen, or, uh, mental mistakes, excuse me, that can hurt a team. Not the type of start to your football game that Coach Reeser had planned up. He talked before the game about how focused his boys were, how excited they were to get the second season underway. And a home playoff football game. And so far, Crestview, the 15 seed, has looked a little bit more like the number two seed tonight. And the impressive part about it is, is the Knights have had missed opportunities as well. They haven't capitalized on everything, so Calvert's lucky in that regard. But you need to make a stop here, keep them out of field goal range. Crestview, two turnover recoveries. Pit stop turnover Recovery machine. <laughs> and there you go. Uh, looks like it might be another first down for the Knights. Yeah, it was a great effort there on the outside. Sheets knew where he had to go and dove for the sticks just to get across. We're at the six and a half minute marker here in the second quarter. Make sure you stay tuned here at Heart of Ohio Sports. Buckeye IT halftime show coming up as we'll feature our local bands. Take a look around at all of the playoff football action here. Uh, check in with the other playoff game here in Tiffin, Ohio, is the uh, Columbian Tornadoes. They're on the other side of the town playing some playoff football. So we'll uh, check in, see what they're up to. Of course, we'll review all of tonight's action here. Horniman Stadium on Heidelberg's campus. Eggleson has Whoa. helmets ripped off. And he's taken down inside the 20. <laughs> so he'll come off for a play? Yeah. <laughs> this is like a Jason Witten moment right here as he uh, had his helmet knocked off but kept driving forward with the football. <laughs> oh, I love that look there from number 56, Carter <laughs> Cook. He just kind of... It's like, what happened? <laughs> he shrugged his shoulders as he came away with just the helmet. I think he thought it might be the football when it kind of uh, went flying across the field. Penix, quarterback keeper, and he's off. Flag on the field, and he's going to be taken down at the 12-yard line. So the flag's on our side of the field here. That's the Calvert side. Not sure who it was, did not see it. It might be on Crestview, and uh, that could push him back a little bit here. Yep, it's going to be on Crestview, another penalty. That's their sixth penalty of the half. Yeah, Braxton Leith with the penalty. And that'll bring up third down as they're going to repeat it. it. Actually, they, I think it's still going to be third down. Yeah, it's going to, they're going to repeat third down, push the ball back. So it'll be about, what, third and four, 14? So the scoreboard says third down, and there we go. They just flipped it over. All right, yeah, third and 14 for Crestview after the penalty on the field. And, uh, yeesh, kind of a sloppy game here. And there's another penalty. False start on the Knights' offense. That's going to push them back more. Make that seven penalties tonight. And uh, Steinmetz signs in graphic ink. Good selection 
on our title sponsor of the evening. As we've got nine penalties so far tonight. Crestview Four- takes a timeout here, and I think you need to <laughs> stop the bleeding a little bit. 14-0, to zero, Crestview has a lead. And uh, they got the ball back here on, uh, after a muffed punt by the Senecas, and uh, they've gone the wrong direction ever since they got that ball. Well, they did go forward, and then <laughs> I mean, they came backward, sure. and then they came backward <laughs> even more. But right now they're looking at a third and 19 from the 34-yard line, and uh, that's a lot of yardage to pick up here. So smart move, calling that timeout, trying to get things sorted out. Offense has done an excellent job so far tonight. Braxton Leith been lethal on the ground, and uh, Penix been a dual-threat nightmare for this Seneca's uh, defense. Again, Penix is a junior, Leith a sophomore. A couple of young guys are going to have him for a few more years here. Really, the whole team is young. I'm counting five, six, seven, maybe about ten seniors on the roster. A lot of, a lot of room for growth over the years for this Crestview team. Third and 19, Penix rolling to his right, slings it. He's got a man not able to bring it in, though, as it was Putman, the intended receiver. Let me tell you, I am impressed with Penix's arm. Yeah. He can sling it, man. In motion, that ball was in the hands. He's been accurate over the middle, and he's got some real velocity on these balls. No question. Bryson Penix, 6'1", 190 pounds. Like you said, Zach, just a junior. It's Crestview Knights football team. So with the incomplete pass and the series of penalties, they're going to have to punt the ball, and they're going to try to pin Calvert deep in their own area. Klaus lets it go, hits him. Klaus able to get it as he's buried at the five-yard line. Oh, my. Second misfortunate play there. The ball just found its way into Klaus, who got rocked once he picked it up. Yeah. uh, Not a good break for Calvert. No, uh, it was uh, Godfrey who bounced off him and gave it back to Crestview on the last punt. This punt bounces off of Billy Klaus. He's able to pick it up and save it. But this uh, Calvert offense buried at the five-yard line. Five minutes left in the first half of play, and Calvert's got a 14-point deficit. Schultz throws it incomplete. Klaus, the intended receiver, he had it, not able to bring it in. Oof. Yeah, that, man, Zach, uh, just this offense just doesn't seem to be in sync here in the first half of play. And, you know, our keys at the beginning of the, of the game, all about the rushing attack, and we just really have not seen that rushing attack much tonight. Yeah, and that's credit really to Cole Harding's squad, the head coach of the Knights. They've been playing extremely solid defense right here. I mean, there's pressure before the running backs can even get to the line of scrimmage. Warneman buried and lost about half a yard on the run. Yeah, trying to use your your weapons and uh, get a little breathing room, but right now it's third and 11 from the four-yard line. Calvert, they they got to do something here. And, uh, you know, I think they're going to have to rely on Schultz to throw it. And, uh, you know, he's standing there in the end zone. I wouldn't be surprised if pressure comes. Here it is. Yep. Blitz coming. Schultz hit as he throws it. And uh, Rumbach saying that, hey, they had a hand on me. But Schultz forced to throw it early as he had two defenders bearing down on him. Overthrows his intended receiver, Jacob Rumbach. Fourth down. Seneca is going to be forced to punt the ball again. Yeah, Schultz, he had no choice but to throw that ball as he got hit as he let it fly. All right, Rumbach, kick it, and uh, 
Not a bad kick, but it bounces the wrong way. And Schumacher is going to down it there at the 37-yard line. And Crestview really kind of picking the ball back up right where they had it last time. So uh, about a minute burned off the clock. And Crestview, they got the ball at the 37-yard line, almost the same exact place that they had it on their last possession. Well, let's see what happens here. As Crestview, they have a 14-0 lead over Calvert and Crestview. They got the ball first, so Calvert, they'll get the ball first in the second half. So there's some good news if you're a Seneca's fan. All right, here we go. And it's going to be number 20, Zayden Martin, who rushes the ball right up the middle. Solid gain on first down. About five yards there on that carry. And that'll bring up second and five for the Knights offense. All right, keep an eye on the receivers here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, number three, Putman, has kind of been a go-to guy. And Crestview rushes it again right up the middle. Clearly trying to burn some clock as we're now down to three minutes and 30 seconds left in the first half of play. Again, make sure you stay tuned for our Buckeye IT halftime show as we'll feature our local marching band. And uh, we'll check out some of the area playoff scores. And incomplete pass to Putman, intended receiver. All right, second and four. Actually, it's fourth and five. And uh, down at three minutes. And Crestview taking their time. Nine, eight, seven seconds left on the uh, play clock there. Two, Crestview snaps it. Penix rolling to his right. Quarterback keeper is going to tuck it away. He's going to be buried around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. So they're going to turn it over, and uh, Calvert, they're going to get the ball back. Got to give it to this Calvert defense. The last two drives, uh, they give Crestview the ball inside of the 50, and they stop them there. Uh, no question, and that's exactly what they needed there, Connor. Uh, Calvert defense needed a stop. They got it. Now they've got three minutes for their offense to get cooking and uh, try to put up some points as they've got a two-score deficit. Well, it would feel better than scoring here, going to the half and getting the ball second half. No doubt, Warneman takes the pass, and he's going to be buried behind the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play is, <laughs> man, Connor, this... Uh, this Knights defense has just been suffocating so far tonight. It's been so aggressive, and like what you were saying with Calvert's run game, they've just been shutting it down before uh, either Warnament or Rombach even gets the ball into the line of scrimmage. So. In the, yeah. In the games that we've seen with Calvert, uh, when they're able to establish the run first, offense has really been clicking, but so far they're trying to pass to set up the run. As Schumacher, he's got it. A couple blockers in front of him, but he's tackled. Taken down at the 35-yard line. Schultz's pass is completed to number 22, John Schumacher. Brought down by number 66, Connor Sheets. Pick up a four in a play. Brings up a third. Yeah, That's going to be third and six for this Calvert offense. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, definitely coming into the playoffs here. I mean, seeds, seeds say something, but they don't say something at the same time because all teams are here for one thing, and that's to win in advance. And Crestview... Yeah, they're ranked 15th, but uh, tough game, or tough team. Schultz forced to run out, throws it. Schumacher, did he catch it? No, incomplete. They're saying Schumacher did not get it as it hit the turf. Ooh, I don't know. That's awful close right there. Number 22, John Schumacher, plus incomplete. Brings up a fourth and six for the 
Even with his back, even with his back facing towards us, that was very close. But I thought he picked up the ball there. I thought he had a catch. Uh, yeah, I agree. I, I thought he got a hand on it, reeled it in, uh, which would have brought up maybe fourth and a couple of inches there. But as it stands, fourth and six for Calvert Rumbach, uh, back to punt the ball. Of course, he also can rush it. <laughs> got about a minute forty here in the first half, and he's going to kick it away. And it's going to be Putman who catches the ball to 20. And he's going to run it back. He's still going. 30, 35. He's got some space. 40, 45. Midfield. Putman pushed out of bounds. Wow, what a return by number three, Kellen Putman. Was that Rombach that made the tackle there? I think it might have been, yeah. It was. Jacob Rombach. Tackling it, and uh, you know, if the punter is making the tackle, that's that's your last line of defense. That is. <laughs> Putman almost popped it to the house right there. Tell you what, it's a different experience over here too, with the stand stand on one side of the field, and with Kelvert's team being on this sideline. What do you think about the fans, Crestview's fans, being on their sideline? Could that affect them a little bit as well? I don't know, uh, but uh, hey. Horniman Stadium is gorgeous. It's beautiful. Love it. Press box is amazing. And there you go. Oh, goodness. All the way. Isaac Klein. Touchdown, Crestview. As Klein takes it the distance. But there is a flag on the field right at the line of scrimmage. Let's see if this one comes back. Right now, Klein got a 50-yard touchdown run. What a oh, goodness. <laughs> and you can hear some of the Crestview fans booing as that touchdown's coming back. <laughs> as a uh, penalty on the field. And uh, Connor, that's Crestview's eighth penalty tonight. I was just going to ask you what number they're at. Yeah, that's, that's number eight. And we're only in the second quarter of play. Now we've got a minute left. But uh, you take uh, that that one takes uh, points off the scoreboard. On the offense, number 25. Ten yard penalty from the previous spot, still first down. Ten yard penalty, and now you're in your own territory. Yeah. So. Bo Eggleson. Egg on your face, Eggleson, as that took <laughs> points off the board for your Knights football team. Mm, that's a huge one right there. So instead of a touchdown, now. Points come off the board. 10-yard penalty. It's going to be first and 21 for the Knights. Penix, Putman, Putman falls. The turf will be credited with the tackle. The turf monster. That's right. Uh, speaking of which... We've got uh, some excellent T-shirts here at Heart of Ohio Sports. And uh, the Blue Who, Who's Monster T-shirts. They get tossed out into the stands here and there. Not sure if we've got any uh, over here at Heidelberg, but I know they've got some over at Frost County. They toss out to the fans. As, oh, Leith, first down and more. First, jeez. He Just like that, Connor, and uh, Crestview first down. I mean, holy cow, it's Braxton Leith is having a game. Leith has been lethal so far for this covered defense. Oh, no question. Man, he's got speed. Uh, he averages six and a half yards a carry, and you can see why right there as he picks up a first down. And Penix connects with number 14, Ren Sheets. Another first down for Crestview. 27 seconds on the clock. Crestview, after points were taken off because of a penalty, coming back with a with some rage here, trying to get those points, is uh, they're threatening this Calvert defense once again. 27 seconds, first and eight. Penix, quarterback keeper, working his way forward, and he's going to be drugged down, maybe short. Ball knocked loose, but... The ball was already down. So timeout on the field here. So we're, 
They got a timeout. We're going to take a timeout. YLFCU timeout, that is. And uh, timeout Crestview. It'll be second and goal from the one-yard line. 17 seconds here left in the first half of play. And let's bring Zach Dillon back into it. Zach, uh, if you're the coach down on the field, what are you telling your Crestview team? What are you telling your Calvert defense, for that matter? Well, first you're telling Crestview, all right, hey, we have a yard to get, and those aren't hard to come by uh, if you're Crestview. They have been obviously dominant this first half of play. Uh, Calvert defense, you got to make a stand. Like, it, it is, it is. Uh, what, what did you say earlier? It was gut check time? It is gut check time. It, your, your defensive line needs to get a push if you're going to break this, right? 17 yep. seconds, if you can make a stop here. Maybe waste the clock. You get the ball first in the second half. And you're down two touchdowns. That's not a bad hole to be in at all. Three no. touchdowns. A little bit uh, more difficult. Obviously, that's a factor more difficult. So, need to make a big stop here. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, somebody I'd keep an eye on there. You got two running backs there. Bo Eggleson and Braxton Leith. Leith has been lethal. Eggleson, touchdown. Yep. Crestview's cracking this one open. As they put up their third touchdown of the evening, this time Bo Eggleson with the score. Helmet or not, he's in the end zone. Yeah, that, that's right. Helmet or not, Bo Eggleson will deliver. All right, Connor, how'd that look from up there? Because, uh, I mean, he just put his shoulder down and took what he wanted. Ooh, bad P-A-T, <laughs> no good. That means it's going to be 20 to 0. Crestview over Calvert as we're nearing the end of the first half of play. No, but exactly, Don. That's what he did. He just put his shoulder down and drove right in. <laughs> I'm kind of speechless here, boys. Uh, Crestview, uh, look, we knew they were going to be a tough team, and uh, a couple years ago when they had a chance to meet up with Calvert in the playoffs, they were a tough team then, and they just know how to play Calvert, I guess is how it is. 2020 was 50-13 to 13 Crestview, and then in, they met again in 2016, and that was 53 or 54-20. to 20. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, Crestview may have the Seneca's number, but, uh, you know, Coach Reeser's team, uh, they uh, they never quit, always fighting. And, you know, the seniors down there, they're going to have a few things to say there at halftime. Uh, and uh, they want to come out firing in all cylinders and uh, get a hot start to the second half of play. And uh, that's what they gotta got to focus on here as uh, they look ahead here second part of uh, tonight's playoff contest. Now, I don't have the numbers in front of me, and I'll, I'll work to look that up during the break, but Calvert is a second-half team and has been all season, uh, according to their max prep stats. Uh, they average, I believe, I think it is I think it is 10 and then 14 in the third and fourth quarters. We'll get that number for you uh, after the break. I was going to say, I think this is uh, the biggest deficit Calvert will be facing coming to the half as well. Yeah, Calvert usually, uh, yeah, you're right, Zach, uh, usually they, they are a little bit slower to get started, and right around second quarter, going into third quarter, that's where they really hit their peak. So it uh, be fun to see what they can come up with in the second half. Six seconds, I imagine they're not going to do a whole lot here as uh, they've got 59 yards to go if they do try. Schultz looking to pass it, steps up, going deep. Rumbach, he's got it. Rumbach taken down at the 10-yard line. No, they're saying it's incomplete. Rumbach did not hold on to the ball. So that's the end of the first half here from Horniman Stadium. It's Crestview 20, Calvert 0. We'll be back for a halftime show. I'm Zach Dillon, and you're watching Heart of Ohio Sports.
local employers and businesses for over 30 years, Pyramid Recruiting Offices has been operating out of that familiar A-frame building located at 373 North Washington Street since 1988. Call Pyramid Recruiting today at 419-447-0455. Pyramid Recruiting Offices, Tiffin's only locally owned and operated job placement service. UIS Insurance and Investments, your hometown agency, providing a full range of insurance and financial services with a local touch. Contact your homegrown agent, Sam Shelt Palm, for a professional review today at 419-447-4242, extension 1132. Buckeye IT Services is a trusted partner for cybersecurity, fully managed, and co-managed IT support. Municipalities, financial organizations, and mature businesses turn to them to eliminate IT stress and enable growth. Visit BuckeyeIT.com today to start your partnership. It's time for high school football on Heart of Ohio Sports. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports here at Horniman Stadium on campus, Heidelberg University. It is halftime, our Buckeye IT halftime show. Coming to you live from Tiffin, Ohio. We're going to go down onto the field as the Crestview Knights marching band is getting ready to entertain. Emily Karcher, Josie Williamson, Jacob Strickler, and the 2023 Marching Knights. Episode one of tonight's show comes to us from a galaxy far, far away. Be glad you have the high ground for this performance. Here's the main theme and the Imperial March from Star Wars. Ready for the weekend? This is Starboy by the weekend.
Put on your sunscreen for this final tune because the Knights are bringing the heat from the largest star in the galaxy, the sun. This is Pitbull's Fireball. This fantastic performance was written in the stars. Please put your hands together for the Crestview Marching Knights. Crestview Marching Knights are under the direction of Mr. Brett Latman. Assisting staff members are Drew Mosier, Kennedy Seitz, Kimberly Seitz, Kirsten Swander, and Jordan Uptegrove. Drum majors are Emily Karcher and Josie Williamson. tonight. The theme of tonight's Calvert Marching Band show is student favorites, with the entire show being selected and choreographed by our students. Our first selection for you tonight is none other than the popular 1980s hit, Funky Town, originally written by the band Lips. This song has been featured in movies, TV shows, and marching bands throughout the country. An old student favorite, we couldn't help but break this piece out for you tonight. Enjoy our rendition of Funky Town.
next piece, we bring you the 1969 Neil Diamond hit, Sweet Caroline. In 2007, Neil Diamond shared that the inspiration for this song was JFK's daughter, Caroline, who was only 11 at the time the song was originally released. Diamond later sang the song for her at her 50th birthday celebration. Please feel free to sing along. We know you know the words. Enjoy Sweet Caroline. Our final selection needs no introduction, and all Jedi fans will recognize. This arrangement from John Williams has been a timeless classic since the moment it was composed. Please enjoy our rendition of the Star Wars theme. In Heart of Ohio Sports, it's our Buckeye IT halftime show here from Horniman Stadium 
on campus at Heidelberg University in beautiful Tiffin, Ohio. It's halftime and Crestview Knights, the visiting Crestview Knights. They've got a 20 to zero lead over the hometown Calvert Senecas. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. We'll recap all the first half of action. Take a look around the area at some of our playoff scores and get ready for a second half of playoff football. Here at Hart. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Unlock your peak performance with holistic pain management that soothes your brain and body. Say goodbye to inflammation and stress and hello to restful sleep, injury recovery, and more. Pulse Therapy, where wellness meets performance. Located at 205 Jefferson Street inside Meraki Salon and Barber, contact 567-230-4003 to book your session today. Tell them Heart of Ohio Sports sent you for $5 off your first visit. Klaus Electric is a veteran and family-owned full-service electrical contracting firm that has grown to be a first-class electrical contractor serving Northwest Ohio. Their mission is to provide high-quality commercial and industrial electrical projects in a timely manner. They do this by forming and training a professional team of employees who are dedicated to their core values, conscious of safe work practices, all while forming long-term relationships with their customers. Visit their website for more information at klauselectric.com. You're locked in to the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Heart of Ohio Sports. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Why go to Lee's Floor Covering in Tiffin? Because at Lee's Floor Covering, they know that selecting the right flooring for your home can be overwhelming. They make choosing the right items for your home simple. At Lee's Floor Covering, they have one of the largest selections of floor covering in Northwest Ohio, including Abbey Carpet and Floor, Stop in and see for yourself what everyone raves about at Lee's Floor Covering in Tiffin. Stop down to Bench Warmers in Tiffin or call it in for delivery. Fresh cut fries, locally sourced ingredients, and phenomenal service. Give the Tiffin store a call at 567-268-9268 and place your delivery order now. Bench Warmers Restaurant and Delivery. Small business owners need somebody that can open the door to financing. At First National Bank of Sycamore, we love opening the door for financing opportunities. You're locked in to the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Heart of Ohio Sports. Welcome back to Tiffin, Ohio. We're on campus at Heidelberg University, and uh, it's halftime here at Horniman Stadium, and uh, the Crestview Knights, who are back out onto the field here. Crestview Knights have a 20-0 lead over the Calvert Senecas, so let's uh, take a quick walk down memory lane here and review a little bit of what happened in the first half of play. Uh, so immediately after our bench warmers opening kickoff, we had a couple of uh, fumbles that went back and forth, and uh, ultimately, Crestview was able to pick up a fumble, punch it in for a touchdown, giving themselves a 7-0 lead in the first quarter of play. And then the second quarter was, again, uh, all Crestview, as uh, Crestview able to toss it, pick up a 20-yard TD catch, pick up a punt that was dropped and uh, punched that in for another touchdown and that gave him a 20 to zero lead there at halftime and of course um, Zach uh, for me just kind of keep coming back to our Lee's keys to the game we highlighted the rushing duo for the Calvert Senecas and uh, they just have not been able to get it going so far tonight. No, they haven't, and that, that touchdown right at the end, the, the little one-yard rush, that was really the dagger of the first half. Calvert gets the ball back here. We'll talk about uh, those running stats, those keys to the game, right? They had to establish the run. They had to control the run on either side. Jacob Rumbach, four rushes, seven yards, two fumbles. Cal Warnament, five rushes, zero net yards, and uh, Harry Schultz, he is one rush uh, for two yards on that pickup. So they'll get the ball back here, and they need to come out of the gates uh, quickly because those numbers are just completely counterintuitive to how Calvert has operated this whole season. Now, on the other side of the ball, uh, Braxton Leith 
12 rushes, 143 Whew. yards. Wow. That is as dominant as you can be <laughs> without putting a rushing touchdown on the board. Then Penix, the quarterback, seven rushes, 19 yards, a touchdown and a fumble. And then Bo Eggleston uh, has a little bit. Zayden Martin, four, four rushes for 11 yards. So, again, it is a tale of, of two offenses right here uh, at Horniman Stadium. Yeah, Crestview, 174 total rushing yards to go along with another 112 passing yards compared to Calvert's nine rushing yards and 29 receiving yards. A uh, pretty stark difference there. Now, of course, Calvert, they're going to get the football back here first in the second half of play, but uh, I think we need to... Uh, uh, let that soak in here for a moment. About 90 seconds here from the second half of play. Uh, and uh, let's uh, go up to our announcer cam there with uh, Connor Rausch. I uh, would like to thank Heather Hunker, travel advisor with Magic Moments Vacations. Uh, Connor, uh, take us around uh, the playoffs here. Uh, you were talking scores uh, as we were uh, getting ready to come back on. What kind of uh, scores do you have for us uh, for this first week of playoff football action? So on the other side of town, you got Columbia in the head of Ashland, 35 to nothing at halftime. And then you go over and look at Hopewell. They are up over Montpelier, 19 to seven. Another one of our schools, we're covering Lakota. They, they are traveling over to Columbus Grove. They are down 29 to three at halftime. And then Carey is up over Ashland Crestview, 21 nothing. And then Colonel Crawford is ahead of Seneca East, 17 to nothing in the third. You're listening to and watching our Buckeye IT halftime show here in Tiffin, Ohio. Uh, and uh, Connor there on our announcer's cam, keeping us connected and up to date with uh, some of that playoff action. And, of course, as the uh, second half of play unfolds, we'll start previewing uh, the next round of, uh, of the playoffs and take a look at uh, what's ahead for one of these teams. And, uh, Zach, you had mentioned uh, Calvert typically uh, they do a pretty good job here in the third quarter uh, as, um, uh, as uh, they kind of come out and they put up uh, uh, quite a few points there. And uh, really that's kind of what they're going to have to do is uh, come out here third quarter and uh, try to establish that run that we looked at, only nine rushing yards. That's not uh, really conducive to uh, controlling momentum and the, uh, and the uh, uh, clock here. they got to come out here in the third quarter, and uh, they need some points is really what it is. That's exactly what it is, Dom. Again, you come out here, score an early touchdown, get some points on the board, start feeling better, maybe get your offense into a little bit of a rhythm, and all of a sudden you're right back in this thing, only down two touchdowns, and you just kind of keep chipping away. Yeah, that's about all you can hope for there uh, is uh, Calvert, Billy Klaus, taking it up past the 40-yard line, solid return for Calvert. As they come out of the gates, ready to play. Good return. That's what you need. A hot start. Billy Klaus, as we have an injury on the field. That's number 11, Hayden Parrott. Away from the tackle. That is a good point. It was, oh, maybe... 10, 15 yards in front of the tackle. So we'll, we'll step away here. Keep it locked in. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Serving local employers and businesses for over 30 years, Pyramid Recruiting Offices has been operating out of that familiar A-frame building located at 373 North Washington Street since 1988. Call Pyramid Recruiting today at 419-447-0455. Pyramid Recruiting Offices, Tiffin's only locally owned and operated job placement service. Let Heather Hunker, travel advisor with Magical Moments Vacation, take the stress out of booking your next getaway. 
specializing in family and group vacations, as well as adults-only trips. Heather can also help you with booking your dream destination wedding. Most trips are planned at no additional cost to you, and you'll have her support both pre-travel and in-destination with every step of the way. Book your next dream getaway now. Heather Hunker, travel advisor with Magical Moments Vacations. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Hey, you're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Welcome back uh, as a short little break. And uh, the one thing that you missed, Calvert going deep. And uh, Schultz just missed uh, Billy Klaus. So that's going to bring up second and 10 for the Seneca's offense. This offense, uh, a lot of passes so far uh, tonight. Uh, not a lot of rushes, uh, not a lot of yards for this offense. Uh, hoping to change it. Schultz, quarterback keeper. He's got a little space. He's going to be hit and taken to the ground by number seven, Jared Harding. Big hit there from Harding. Schultz went down hard. Pops back up, ready for this third down. Schultz had two rushing yards in the first half. Uh, doubled it right there on that run. Third and six for the Senecas. Keep an eye on that bunch at the top of the screen. For the Senecas here. Schultz looking to pass it. Slings it to the top. He's got Wolf. First down, Senecas. Nice little pitch and catch there from the Senecas. We'll take a look at a replay here. And again, these are the, the, the not momentum plays, but the, the plays that get you in a rhythm, right? You start picking up these little chunk plays, and all of a sudden you're driving down the field. And uh, Schultz is definitely a rhythm passer. All right, uh, really hard to pick up anything. Uh, he, uh, he was 5 of 14 in the first half. Uh, Billy Klaus... Pushed out of bounds around the 32-yard line. That should be enough for another Calvert first down. Move those chains. Seneca's are, they got a good game plan going here. As, uh, they're able to connect. That they do. So Schultz is now starting to get into that rhythm that we're talking about. I'd like to see Calvert stay on the ball, keep this Knights team on their heels. Working so far, Schultz. Gives it to Warneman. Warneman. He spins and he's still moving inside the 20. Another first down for Calvert. Cal Warneman with a huge first down run. Look at this. Whoop. Nice little spin move. Three straight first downs here for Calvert. Picking up a little momentum. And Harry Schultz starting to get warmed up in the second half, and that's exactly what Calvert needs. Give it to Rumbach. Rumbach swallowed and thrown to the ground. Oof. Been a tough night rushing the football there for number 28, Jacob Rumbach. Yeah, a pair of fumbles like we've mentioned, a handful of yards. This is a player obviously led the team in, in rush yards and touchdowns last year, if I recall correctly. Yeah, and so, absolutely. Uh, this guy is one that you can really count on in big moments. So you're going to look to get him you know, warmed up yeah. here. Second and 13 for Calvert. Three split out at the bottom. Schultz looking at that bottom formation, and he's got his man, and it's going to be Rumbach, the man of the hour. Just as you were talking about him, Zach, he gets that reception. It's these little confidence-boosting plays. Show him that you still have, uh, you know, your faith. You'll give him that handoff, take that out route from the slot. Just try to get him a little confidence, you know, get him going. Third and seven from the 16-yard line. Seneca's moving the ball really well here on this drive. Schultz dumps it off to Wolf. Wolf dives forward, but it's going to be just short of the first down marker. Fourth down. I'm sure they're going to go for it here. Yeah, Aiden Adams, the defensive lineman there, read the screen well. 
Yeah. And was able to get a hand on Wolf to, to coach trip wants, him up a little bit. Coach is keeping his boys out there. It's playoff time. There's nothing to wait for next year or tomorrow. Leave it all out there on the field. I like it. Schultz, he's got his man, Billy Klaus, first down. Great route, Billy Klaus, as he took it right to the first down marker, caught it, moving the chains. Yeah, great play call here. Just a little curl, put Klaus right at the sticks, look for the ball, perfect. It's exactly the type of route you need to run in that scenario. First down, Calvert, as... They got first and goal from the seven-yard line. Schultz, ooh, just skips it in the dirt, unable to connect with Klaus. That'll bring up second and goal from the seven. And Calvert, uh, they just have been doing a really good job here on this drive. They need the touchdown, though, as it is 20-0. to zero. Crestview with a three-score lead over the hometown Calvert Senecas. Schultz surveying the field, dumps it off to Rumbach, Rumbach back up the middle, dives forward, is he in? No, he's just gonna be short. Yeah, he's just short. And as you saw, some of his teammates putting their hands up. Everybody in the press box getting excited. Just inches shy of that goal marker. And another player down on the ground. Take a look. He cuts back up inside, stumbles, and yeah, falls right. That was close. I, I think it's the correct spot. Yeah. So we're at inside the one-yard line is... This is a Crestview member down. So Calvert Seneca's in the red zone here. First time in the second half. I'd like to thank Pulse Therapy, making sure that uh, we stay connected. Getting the pulse of this drive as they enter the red zone and hoping to put up a touchdown. What a way coming out of the half. I mean, Calvert just playing their small ball and rolling down the field, getting that confidence back. Uh, absolutely, and uh, this is the Calvert Senecas we've seen most of the season as they went undefeated into Week 10, and they uh, played a very, very tough Hopewell Loudon football team and uh, got beat by a tough team. And, uh, I mean, if you look down there on the sideline, I just I keep looking at Coach, uh, Coach Suter there, and uh, <laughs> he, uh, or Coach Reeser, rather, uh, and uh, he just, um, he's talking to every single one of his boys individually, keying in on it. And this is going to be a big third down play for him as they hope to punch it in. Mm -hmm. So Seneca is trying to get themselves organized down there. I uh, want to make sure that we thank some of our sponsors uh, as uh, we've got so many uh, to be grateful for, grateful for here at Heart of Ohio Sports. I want to thank Pyramid Recruiting Offices, Buckeye IT Services, UIS Insurance and Investments, x Mexican Restaurant, Your Legacy Federal Credit Union, Klaus Electric, Steinmetz Signs and Graphic Inc., Lee's Floor Covering, Heather Hunker, uh, Travel Advisor with Magical Moments Vacations, uh, again, Heather Hunker, make sure you uh, touch base with her if you have any travel needs. The Pit Stop, Bench Warmers Restaurant and Delivery, Placinite 3D Printing and Design, who sponsored our player of the game. They've got a really, really cool trophy that we'll show you uh, after, the, after the football game. A little Hugo's, uh, Pulse Therapy, a Relax and Revive Salon and Spa, First National Bank of Sycamore, Feasel's Frame and Collision, Mercy Health, Tiffin Hospital, Webster's Industry, and Dr. Jack Felton and family. Thank you very much for sponsoring Heart of Ohio Sports here during the playoffs. You can see he's getting up all right. Not putting any weight on that left leg. 
So hope he's okay. Yeah, looks like uh, what was it number twenty Zayden Martin uh, injured and uh, key player for the Crestview Knights. Uh, hopefully, uh, young man's going to be okay, but needs a little help getting off the field. And uh, with seven forty-six here in the third quarter from Tiffin, Ohio, we'll resume play. And uh, Calvert plows their way forward, and did he get it in? That's the question. All depends on the spot. The Senecas are saying touchdown. No official signal on the field. Is it? Wow. They're saying he did not get in. Look at that football. Look at how close it is. <laughs> it's almost like the nose of that football is over the goal line, and they will not even call it a touchdown. That is as close as you can get. You see here the handoff, and then Schultz tries to make that push at the end. That, wow. That, that's an incredible spot uh, uh, if you're the Knights. Just look at this. Look look at that spot. <laughs> I, I mean, you look, uh, that is about as close as you can possibly get it. I, The shadow is in the end zone right now. The shadow of the football. It's Well, okay. <laughs> It's fourth down, by the way, um, as uh, Crestview able to stop the Calvert Seneca somehow on that third down play. And uh, I, I don't think we've seen it that close ever. I, I Again, like I said, <laughs> I don't think you get any closer ever. I mean, that is that is right there. So the play call has to come out. I think you're expecting, obviously, like a what Philadelphia Eagles. I, what are they calling it? The tush jump push pad, now, right? tush push, I mean. The, or do you do you like do you fake it up the middle and let Schultz roll out and try to get it in? Or is that too like, fancy? Like the old Peyton Manning play yeah. from, from Indianapolis? Uh, maybe uh, the jump pass. Uh, Tim I Tebow mean, style. I don't know. Uh, they're they're like we're saying. There's so many ways you can go about this. I think yeah. the, the tried and true is either the just the running back dive up the middle or the quarterback yeah. sneak. So we'll see well, here. We're, yeah, we're gonna find out. Uh, Cal Warneman. Uh, he's the uh, lead back. I think they're gonna they're gonna do the tush push there, Zach. Quarterback keeper, and uh, it's gonna be Warnament pushing Schultz in. Touchdown, Calvert. That's right. Finally, the symbol that they're looking for. Touchdown, Calvert. As Warnament helps push Schultz in, and the Senecas are on the board. Yeah, you see the big boys there on the screen in the graphic. Take a look at this replay. <laughs> All of that for an inch of ground. That's really what it was. Yeah, just check this out. Schultz digs in behind Wolf. And then you had Warneman just push Schultz all the way. Touchdown. You see Rumbach jumping up and down. PAT is good. It is 20 to 7. Calvert's making a game of it here. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Why go to Lee's Floor Covering in Tiffin? Because at Lee's Floor Covering, they know that selecting the right flooring for your home can be overwhelming. They make choosing the right items for your home simple. At Lee's Floor Covering, they have one of the largest selections of floor covering in Northwest Ohio, including Abbey Carpet and Floor. Stop in and see for yourself what everyone raves about at Lee's Floor Covering in Tiffin. Stop down to Bench Warmers in Tiffin or call it in for delivery. Fresh cut fries, locally sourced ingredients, and phenomenal service. Give the Tiffin store a call at 567 268 9268 and place your delivery order now. Bench Warmers Restaurant and Delivery. Small business owners need somebody that can open the door to financing. At First National Bank of Sycamore, we love opening the door for financing opportunities. You're locked in to the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Heart of Ohio Sports. Well, welcome back to Horniman Stadium on campus of Heidelberg University. Calvert Seneca is up on the board as they punch it in. And see that nice squib kick there as they try to stop Crestview. But Crestview's got other plans. And they're off to the races. Hunter Jones, he's running. And he could go to the seven-yard line. <laughs> uh, he couldn't, he does. Great return there by the Knights. Whew. 
Hunter Jones with a huge return. And just when the Senecas steal a little momentum, Crestview swipes it back. That's true. You got to make this stop now as a Seneca defense. Help your offense out a little bit. Like you said, they're able to get it into this one, but need to come up with a stop. Yeah, it makes it that much difficult, that much more difficult when you have a huge, huge uh, return there on the kickoff. And uh, Crestview, they've got first and goal from the six yard line. Leaf hit at the line of scrimmage. No gain. That'll bring up second and goal for Crestview as they are now in the pulse therapy red zone part of the football field. Well, whew. Connor, uh, keep an eye on this football uh, as we, uh, as we uh, might need another close spot uh, as I think this is going to be a pounded out type of drive here. Calvert's got to hold their ground. Second and goal from the five. Leith again up the middle. Short gain as nowhere to go as this stingy Calvert defense playing in tough. That'll be third and goal now from the four-yard line. All right, no gain, third and four. And Crestview <laughs> looking to extend their lead, which has been boiled down to 13 points. Leith cut back. He's pushing it ahead. He's going to be stopped short. And you can see the uh, Seneca fans there, student section in the end zone, yelling, hooting, hollering, trying to make some noise, cheer on this Seneca defense. I think now we have Connor Rausch back on the mic, and, and you can hear through that audio just <laughs> how much noise is being made here on the field. No question. Absolutely love that. I, Zach, I remember uh, a couple years ago, Heidelberg University, they, the kids, uh, the students, they'd bring their couches down and sit in the end zone. Uh, those are the good old days. Uh, but uh, they don't do that here at the OHSAA. I was going to um, say, how long ago <laughs> has, has that been? Because that hasn't been in the last five years that I've been at Heidelberg. <laughs> All right. It's been a couple years. Uh, ah. But uh, it was always so cool. They would literally bring couches and recliners, and they would line the end zone with them. And uh, that's how you watch football. I'm just now, telling you. I know you're not crazy because I've been told by by other people here uh, who have been around at Heidelberg longer than I have. Uh, you know, Greek life or, or, or other <laughs> other students would just line the field on both sides. Uh, phenomenal. You know, Dom, that sounds like Hopewell back in the day, too, in yeah. the 2000s. They bring couches and everything and be in the end zones, just packed house Friday nights, just cheering on the Chieftains. Yeah. Hey, why why sit on a couch at home when you can sit on a couch <laughs> in the end zone of the football game? Right? The best uh, seat in the house. Yeah. Timeout down on the field brought to you by your legacy Federal Credit Union, one of our proud sponsors here at Heart of Ohio Sports. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having a recliner right there from the end zone. Uh, you call a game like that, uh, that'd be a that'd be a lot of fun to call. They'd be standing right down there on the sidelines with president of Heidelberg University, Rob Huntington, down there. I saw Scott Donaldson, the head football coach, down there earlier as well. Got some talented football players out on the field. Uh, not surprised one bit. Scott Donaldson does a great job with the student princes. Fourth and three. All right, fourth and goal from the three-yard line here. Let's see what that timeout was able to, what they're able to come up with during that timeout. All right, Putnam. Motion, Penix. Nowhere to go. They've got him. He's down on the ground. They stop him. There you go. Calvert defense coming up with a stop. And is there a flag on the field? Oh, I don't is, see that, is that on the far side of the field, or is that just dirt, or what is it? Look right at the 
No, it's, it's by the ten yard line. It's oh, a that's a leaf. It's a, leaf. Uh, it's a giant leaf that looks like a flag. Okay. <laughs> a, well, it's let's a victory leaf. Camera quality leaf. there. Let's um, take a look at this here on replay. It's coming off the edge right here, at the top of your screen. And they were all over Putnam, or at Penix, that is. Just nowhere to go. Mm, great stop by the Calvert defense here. They get that ball back, and if their offense keeps doing what they did on the first drive, then uh, Crestview, they're going to start getting really nervous really quick. I tell you what, just, just seeing that tackle there on Rombach, uh, Crestview is tackling very aggressive here. So these, these Calvert kids are taking some hits. Yeah, Rombach, he, uh, he's been stopped all night long. Uh, Warnament. Had a little success, but uh, really that last drive, that touchdown drive, Harry Schultz is the one that made it happen as he was able to connect. And you see here, he's got to step up. He's got pressure. He's going deep. Schultz has got run back. And oh, oh, just not able to bring it in as Rumbach had a step. Oh, that's the play that they wanted right there. They had it. Great call. They had it. Rumbach not having his best game. That pass from Schultz, beautiful, just right mm. in the breadbasket. Mm. Forced to make the Willie Mays over the shoulder catch. Yeah. He couldn't bring it in. Yeah, Coach Reeser, you kind of see him. He's like, that's that's the shot we wanted. Uh, third and eight for the Senecas. Now they got to start thinking first down. They took their shot, but they need the first down so they can keep marching on. Schultz throws it. Klaus, oh, not able to bring it in. Oh, man, Billy Klaus, the intended receiver, he had the distance, dropped it, fourth down. Ah, that's a tough one right there. A third and out inside your own 10-yard line. Schultz, a little upset on that one, and uh, Coach Reeser is giving him that high five. Uh, he did what he had to do. He put it on the number. Hmm. Fourth down after a missed opportunity there by the Senecas. And I got to punt it away. And here we go. Special teams have been a headache as Kellen Putnam takes it off and is tackled by the turf again. Uh, he got he got tackled. You get by, tripped up by seventy four here. Okay. Turf monsters uh, with the assist. Who is that wrecker? <laughs> Could have been. 74. 74 is Lucas Recker, yeah. correct. Yeah. There you go, senior, 6'5", 272. Big man getting a tackle. All right, it's going to be first and 10 for Crestview after a solid return by Kellen Putman. And uh, putting pressure on this Calvert defense, asking him to stop Leith and the rest of the Crestview oh, offense, but here you go. At least they do on this play. So there's a short loss on the uh, on the run. Wolf grabbing that shirt. Hey, do did what you got to do. Did you guys see that? Yeah, do what you got to do. Don't let him get by. Wolf, great job on contain. Giving another Calvert defender a chance to knock Leith down. So now second and ten. Penix, pump fake. Tucks it. He's going to be hit. Looks like Schumacher hits him. Flag oh. coming from the far side of the field. They're going to call a late hit. Uh, it could be. I don't know. The flag came from the end zone part of the field here. We'll take a look here on the replay. Making his way to the outside. Yes. Yeah. And that looks That's to tough. be the call. So might be. Another flag, Steinmetz signs and graphic ink flag on the field, waiting the, the official call to see what's going on. Crestview had eight penalties in the first half. Calvert Good won. Call. Personal foul, number 52 of the defense, 15-yard penalty, and it's foul, foul. Previous foul, excuse me. First down. So that had to be on the field because yeah. I don't believe he was the one who tackled. No, Schumacher hit him, and then uh, number 52, Sam Morgan, he's called for the penalty, the second of the night for Calvert. It's a big one as it gives Crestview a first down. Leith stopped at the line, 
And uh, we talked about costly penalties in the first Number half, as it certainly cost Crestview uh, on a couple a couple opportunities. Uh, missed out on a, a touchdown. It was reversed because of a penalty. And in this case, Calvert, this penalty is uh, costing them because it gave Crestview a first down that otherwise they would not have had. So second and nine from the 14-yard line. The Knights are marching towards the end zone. Seneca defense stopped them last time. And go, oh, great job, Billy Klaus, as he got a hand up to knock it away. Great defensive play there for the Senecas. Take a look on the outside. That's great defensive coverage. He's in good position, gets a hand up, bats the ball away. Yeah, just look at that. Yeah, perfect, perfect position, Billy Klaus, and he was able to get a hand up, knock it away. That's exactly what you teach him there. So it's going to be third and nine from the 14-yard line. Another big third down play here for the Calvert defense. Stopped him on the last drive. Hoping to stop him on this one. Penix, quarterback keeper, has got space inside the five. First down, Crestview. It'll be first in goal for the Knights. Number five, Bryson Penix on the carry. Great call there with the quarterback keeper. Yeah, Crestview trying to capitalize on that great field position. Quick to the line of scrimmage there. Leith going to be used as a decoy as Penix knocked down to the ground for a loss. A little option play there, as you can see, Penix trying to make a decision. Does he want to pull it or just give it to Leith? He pulled it and it was tackled. It's credit to the defensive end playing the read option as well. He's just stretching that out, trying to take it all the way out to the sideline, keeping the eye on the quarterback in case of the pull. Crestview in the pulse therapy red zone part of the field again here. Second and six from the six yard line. Leith handoff. Right side, he's still moving. Pushing forward, touchdown, Crestview. Braxton Leith punches it in from six yards out, and Crestview's got another score on the board. It'll be interesting to see what they do here. They go for two, try to get those extra two points back. With 1.32 remaining in the third quarter of play here from Tiffin, Ohio, Crestview has put in their fourth touchdown of the evening. And it looks like they're going for two, as you called there, Zach. Oh, wow. Yep, just like that. Penix walks into the end zone. Two-point conversion, good. The score, 28-7. to The Knights over the Senecas in the third quarter. I'm Zach Dillon, and you're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Serving local employers and businesses for over 30 years, Pyramid Recruiting Offices has been operating out of that familiar A-frame building located at 373 North Washington Street since 1988. Call Pyramid Recruiting today at 419-447-0455. Pyramid Recruiting Offices, Tiffin's only locally owned and operated job placement service. UIS Insurance and Investments, your hometown agency, providing a full range of insurance and financial services with a local touch. Contact your homegrown agent, Sam Shelt Palm, for a professional review today at 419-447-4242, extension 1132. Buckeye IT Services is a trusted partner for cybersecurity, fully managed, and co-managed IT support. Municipalities, financial organizations, and mature businesses turn to them to eliminate IT stress and enable growth. Visit BuckeyeIT.com today to start your partnership. It's time for high school football on Heart of Ohio Sports. Welcome back to Horniman Stadium on campus of Heidelberg University. The Crestview, the visiting Crestview Knights just punched in their fourth touchdown of the evening. And they've got a 28-7 lead over the hometown Calvert Senecas here 
in the first round of play in the OHSAA state playoffs. So we were talking a little off camera there. Uh, Calvert, uh, not out of this by any stretch of the imagination. We still got a full fourth quarter to go. And the way Harry Schultz has been throwing the ball, there's definitely some hope. We just need to see the Calvert receivers catch it. That's exactly what it is. I think the best way to do that is spread things out for Schultz. Give him an empty backfield. Boot him out to the left or the right. Get him in motion and, and try to try to create mismatches within the defense. Pick up some chunk plays. All right, here we go. The Calvert Senecas. They're uh, they were uh, kind of stalled out the last drive as the receivers unable to bring it in. But before that, they drove the length of the field, punched in their uh, first score of the evening. We'll see what they can do here on their third drive of the second half. Schultz gives it to Klaus on the end around, and he is tackled immediately. Nowhere to go there for Billy Klaus. Yep. I, I mean, how else can you put it? Klaus had no room credit to this defensive line. Long way to run for no yards. Well, oh, excuse me. It was actually the linebacker blitz that was uh, Aiden Martin getting in there making first contact got about one minute less than one minute here in the third quarter and uh time is starting to fade away for the Senecas second and 14 Schultz looking deep he's got Rumbach and oh no Jacob Rumbach unable to bring it in and he had some wide open green space to run if he would have caught it yeah it's gonna be the second pass that he could have back. Mm, tough game for the senior star. Just one of those nights, Zach. Uh, everybody's got him. And right now, uh, it seems to be Jacob Rumbach's night. Third and 14. Uh, it, look, the plays have been good. Uh, Calvert's getting the looks that they want. They just, they need to capitalize. Schultz knocked away, incomplete, fourth down. Billy Klaus, the intended receiver. And they're going to have to punt the ball. That's a tough one. As of right now, it looks like the offense is yeah. staying on the field. If that's the case, this is a hyper-aggressive hyper call. Uh, I mean, these are these are yeah. the big risk, big reward type plays. Thirty nine seconds here in the third quarter from Tiffin, Ohio. Crestview with a three score lead. Calvert going for it, maybe with the hard count. Timeout, Calvert. They want to see what's going on. I'm not sure if they're trying the hard count to see what they could get. It's fourth and fourteen. I mean, it's a long ways to go. Let's see what Coach Reeser's doing as we've got a timeout down on the field there. Your Legacy Federal Credit Union timeout on the field. And um, what are you talking about, Zach? Well, that look that Calvert just showed was, was what I said before. You're spreading out your receivers, giving Schultz that empty backfield, allowing him to move, trying to create, again, that mismatch, trying to get your athletes' balls in space. We'll see if they decide to keep the offense out there. But again, you can say, all right, the most amount of points I can reasonably score in a quarter, and that's like a great quarter is, is, is 28 points, four touchdowns. Hmm. So going for it here, again, it, it's, it's, it's hyper-aggressive. You don't get it. The Knights have the ball in your own territory, and it looks like, it looks like they will decide to punt. Yeah, not not a lot of other options. I, I don't believe because uh, that's kind of what you um, it's it's what you got to do. <laughs> that's just plain and simple right there. Got to keep an eye on the special teams as uh, Crestview's done a great job. The ball sails out of bounds. Crestview's done a great job on returns and uh, just everything in general. 
No, but you're right. The, the special teams has made an absolute difference. The special teams and this defense are playing really with their hair on fire tonight. Knights, they go with first and 10 from their own 28 yard line. All right, Crestview back out onto the field here. 31 seconds left in the third quarter here from Tiffin. And uh, depending on what happens with this drive, uh, you're going to have some trouble there. We've got a new scat back, and he's got some speed, a little burst there. Isaac Klein, the 5'9", athletic running back. Uh, <laughs> Just ATH yeah. all the way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ATH is an is an athlete. That means they'll move him around as a running back, as a wide receiver, tight end, fullback, halfback, whatever you want to call him. Again, someone that'll move all around the offenses. Got a little burst to him. Will let the quarter wind down. All right, yeah, so uh, after three quarters of play here from Horniman Stadium, Crestview 28, Calvert 7. Keep it locked in. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Serving local employers and businesses for over 30 years, Pyramid Recruiting Offices has been operating out of that familiar A-frame building located at 373 North Washington Street since 1988. Call Pyramid Recruiting today at 419-447-0455. Pyramid Recruiting Offices, Tiffin's only locally owned and operated job placement service. Let Heather Hunker, travel advisor with Magical Moments Vacation, take the stress out of booking your next getaway. Specializing in family and group vacations, as well as adults only trips, Heather can also help you with booking your dream destination wedding. Most trips are planned at no additional cost to you, and you'll have her support both pre-travel and in destination with every step of the way. Book your next dream getaway now. Heather Hunker, travel advisor with Magical Moments Vacations. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Uh, Dominic Helmstetter uh, joined by Zach Dillon up here in the booth. And, of course, we've got Connor Roush up above us with the bird's eye view uh, coming to us live. Our Heather Hunker travel advisor. Of course, she's uh, teaming up with Magical Moments Vacations. And, uh, Connor, pretty magical up there. Um, uh, How's the view? It's the best we've had all year. I mean, it's it makes me happy with the great view that we have. Oh, I'm glad I get to share it with you boys. I see this every Saturday up here from my director's chair. Love it. It's crest view. Another carry for Isaac Number Klein as is he grinds his way Williams. up to the 45. Pick up a four in the play brings up a second and six for the Knights. And they're going to take their time. Why not? Try to milk as much of this fourth quarter as possible. Six, five, four seconds on the play clock there for Crestview. Two, one. Just get the snap off. Penix looking to pass, going deep. He's got a man. Oh, just a tad long is Schumacher. With a great defensive play. I think it was good no call, good coverage on the outside by Rombach. In step, excuse me, that's Schumacher. In step all the way. Played the ball. Textbook. Excellent. Well done, John Schumacher. Uh, third and six. For the Crestview Knights, they're clinging to a three-score lead. Penix, quarterback keeper, pushed out of bounds, short of the first down marker. Number five, Bryson Penix. It's right around three, midfield. Out of bounds by number 22, John Schumacher. Brings up a fourth and two for the Knights. Oh, 
Some late substitutions coming on for both teams. 14, 13, 12. Line up on for tonight's number 54, Garrett Yinger, back deep for the Seneca's number two. Calvert does force the punt. Jamison Godfrey, flag on the field oh, as he man. turns the corner, 30, 35 up to the 40. I was curious about that. Jamison Godfrey on the return, flags on the play. Yeah, we'll take a look at a replay here, bottom of your screen. Connor, you made the, oh no, that yeah, block in the back is clear as day. Mm. So this one's like coming all the way back. That's spot of the foul <laughs> plus 15. Coach Reeser having a few words with the official. <laughs> he's just got his hands on his hips and he's just like, come on. That's a tough one. Block in the back. In return, number 10, the return team. Be first down. Half this to the goal, first down. That's a big one. Calvert's third penalty of the night. So, Zach, uh, we're talking about Calvert, and you're like, hey, they gotta, got to put up some points here. And uh, they've got a pretty decent average so far in the season. Uh, they just haven't lived up to it. Uh, yeah, they're averaging 33 and two-thirds points a game this season. Well under that mark tonight. Schultz connects with Klaus. Klaus, not a whole lot of room to run, but he keeps pushing his way forward as he goes out of bounds. Harrison Schultz's pass completes. Uh, clock Second keeps down. moving, so didn't get out of bounds Pushed out soon of enough. By number nine, Isaac Klein. 10-22, 21 20, 19 left to play here this ball game. Second and five as Warneman takes the handoff, jumps his way forward close to the first down marker. Going to be pretty close. Number 21, Cal Warneman on the carry. Looks like he's just short, so that'll bring up third and short for Calvert. Consider every third down from here on out, at least with Calvert's side, as a, a must-get. Again, your defense comes up with a big stop. You need to drive down the field and put some points on the board. All right, let's see what they got. Got him spread out. Schultz throws it, connects. Klaus first down, pushed out of bounds. Hey, that's been their go-to on the short, down and distance. Klaus just running a little curl right to the sticks, getting the ball there. If you remember on that touchdown drive, we saw that on a crucial third down seat here. You know, somebody we have not heard, we've only had, he's only been throwing the ball once, number 12, Carter Wolf, the big tight end. Uh, love to see him get involved, especially right up the middle of the field, and you can see him right there on the screen as he's streaking down the middle, and wouldn't you know it, he throw it to him, and, and oh, they pushed him. Yeah, Coach Reeser is thinking the same thing that I was thinking there as a Wolf, the intended receiver, up the middle, unable to bring it in. I tell you what, Wolf runs the seam route just as you're saying. And I want you to take a look at this route. You're running, you have a little stutter step right there. He's got a cut in front of that defender. Sorry. You're I talking was, for, I was, you're a, I, tight I a tight end. Uh, how, many, you, uh, how many career pass catches did you have? <laughs> they threw the ball to me once in my entire career. And uh, <laughs> let's just passes? say that I did not bring it in either. So uh, my vast experience says you got to cut it in front. <laughs> Rumbach, he's got this one. First down and more. He's not going down easy. Pushed down at the 45. There you go, Jacob. This is a great ball from Schultz. Look at him throw it uh, like a baseball shortstop as we get our, our replay to, to figure itself out here. Again, he, he slings that one kind of from like, three quarters sidearms it right in there. Matthew Stafford would be proud. And then <laughs> Rumbach bumbling, stumbling. First and 10, Calvert, huge connection with senior Jacob Rumbach. It's what the doctor ordered here. 
Schultz, pressure, rolls out to his left, goes deep. He's got Billy Klaus, Billy Klaus, he's got it! Touchdown, Billy Klaus! He juggles it and walks oh, into the end zone. My goodness, what a play there from Klaus. Oh. That'll give you a touchdown for the Senecas. We'll take a look at it on the replay here. This was a broken play. Now look at the outside. This is going to be broken up by number uh, uh, three, Kellen Putnam, right here. He jumps that swing route, so Schultz has to boot out to the left. Points, finds Klaus. What a ball. Boom. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Klaus with a huge, huge touchdown. And that's what you want to see. And we were just talking about how many points they put up. Well, that's how you do that. PAT is good. 28-14. Seneca's got a little life. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Why go to Lee's Floor Covering in Tiffin? Because at Lee's Floor Covering, they know that selecting the right flooring for your home can be overwhelming. They make choosing the right items for your home simple. At Lee's Floor Covering, they have one of the largest selections of floor covering in Northwest Ohio, including Abbey Carpet and Floor. Stop in and see for yourself what everyone raves about at Lee's Floor Covering in Tiffin. Stop down to Bench Warmers in Tiffin or call it in for delivery. Fresh cut fries, locally sourced ingredients, and phenomenal service. Give the Tiffin store a call at 567-268-9268 and place your delivery order now. Bench Warmers Restaurant and Delivery. Small business owners need somebody that can open the door to financing. And at First National Bank of Sycamore, we love opening the door for financing opportunities. You're locked in to the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Heart of Ohio Sports. You're watching playoff football at Heart of Ohio Sports and the Calvert Senecas just put up a huge 44-yard touchdown with Billy Klaus striking. And we've got the onside kick bounces and is going to be stopped by Crestview. I, I got to tell you, Zach, the Crestview special teams has been excellent so far tonight. Yeah, and we were talking about it during the commercial break. We, You called the onside kick immediately as, as they lined up. I'm not in love with that call from Reeser. Again, it's a, it's a very risky play, a big reward, but... Again, you kick that ball all the way down the field. You count on your defense to make a stop, hopefully three and out. Then you have the ball back with six minutes, good field position. Maybe things get moving. But now your defense has to step up. Keep an eye on number 32 in the backfield there, Braxton Leith. Fake it. Penix throws it. He's got a man. Did he catch it? No! Oh my, number three, Kellen Putman. He was open, just could not bring it in. Wow. You know, just when you think they might just salt the clock away, Penix goes deep to his main target. They're just not able to bring it in. Second down for Crestview. And it was there too. I mean, it wasn't a forced play. It, Putnam was open over the top that ball just just out in front of him a bit too much second and ten leaf slips hit will be taken down after picking up about three or four on the run so you were saying it zach uh, this puts a lot of pressure on the calvert defense to make a stop, and uh, you've got Rumbach on the defense, you've got Warnament on the defense, you've got Schumacher on the defense, Billy Klaus on the defense, your offensive core on the defense. <laughs> where, where, <laughs> where are we at with timeouts? Two each? That's a great question. We're going to have to find that out. Penix connects, first down. Yeah, first down, number 14, Ren Sheets. And that is a huge blow to Calvert on the outside. It just untouched, runs right by the cornerback. Take a look here. Oh, he bites on the in route. It's zone. 
and he has mm. flat responsibility. And Billy Klaus, that two-way star we mentioned, uh, maybe getting a little gassed here with 7.28 left in the football game. I, I think what happened there was he was reading the quarterback's Number eyes. He saw the flat route coming out from the running back and tried to jump on it. But again, there was just no one over the top. Time winds down seven minutes now left to play in the game. And Crestview taking their time uh, slowly here. And uh, I think, Connor, the answer to your question might be Calvert has one timeout here. I knew they took one this half. It was before they yeah. scored that touchdown. Leith off to the left side, drug down right around the first down marker, and I think he might have it. He's marked just short. Okay. Yeah, he's going to be maybe half a yard shy, so third and one for Crestview. Now this is Six, the, this, 624. Sorry, this is the, the situation where you're, you're starting to send pressure if you're Calvert, right? This is all or nothing. You need to get a stop in the backfield. You know what they're going to do. The Knights are going to find some way most likely to run the ball, especially with that wing in the game. It's like Wolf coming in with the pressure. Penix thrown to the ground by Billy Klaus. First down, Crestview. And that was it. You knew they were going to run the ball. Crestview counted on that aggressive play. Coach Reeser, unhappy. That's face mask. You saw he was brought down awkwardly. You it's can gonna almost be half hear the him. distance <laughs> to the goal. Five-yard face mask, number four blue at the end of the run. Sorry, Zach. I'm, I'm talking all over you. I'm... No, it, it, it is quite all right, but you're right. Reeser is hot on the sideline, and he is out there almost halfway to the numbers. Steinmetz signs and graphic ink flag on the play. This one's on Calvert, their fourth of the evening, and it uh, helps push Crestview that much close, closer. And Leith oh. is going to push his way onto the doorstep and in for a touchdown. Braxton Leith with his second rushing touchdown of the evening, and that might be the icing on the cake for the Crestview Knights. Take a look here on replay. Strong run here by number 32, Braxton Leith. And the, yeah, there you go, just pushed in by the big boys on the back end. 34 to 14 now. Flag on the field as the PAT. Offsides. We don't know. Calvert was pretty quick to the kicker. And uh, Isaiah Barton on the uh, Crestview got up a little gingerly. Was that their kicker? Uh, I think that's the holder right there in the middle of the screen to the left of the official there, number four. Barton, uh, he was kind of hobbling Offside around. On a defense. After this to the goal, retry. So the fifth penalty of the night there on Calvert gets the PAT team just a tad bit closer, and uh, Barton uh, is holding the kick there. PAT, uh, that's going to be up and good. 35 to 14, and there's a little pushing and shoving, and it's getting chippy now as uh, some of the Senecas have to be restrained as Wolf, he's being pushed back by his own teammates. And they're really, really holding on to Wolf there as they, won't, they don't want Carter Wolf to get any closer as you've got about five flags down on the field. Coaches are on the field pulling their players back. Players are pulling each other back. Well, let's see exactly what happens here. Kick like is up and somebody good. Somebody tried to jump over the top. And then right there, action. <laughs> I, we didn't see the context. I don't know how big of a flop that was. I'm going to invoke the flop rule. Uh, <laughs> Either way. Put the penalty on Crestview. I think that's what the NBA <laughs> does now. 
take, Either way, take the points away. You have five <laughs> flags down on the field. This long of a discussion means it's certainly on both teams. Yeah, you can still see all five of those flags just sitting there where all that action was happening. Connor, can we zoom in on the on the discussion uh, the, there? The officials, they're, they're talking. I know and I caught in on the last part of what happened there where the dude going down, but didn't catch before that. Yeah, what we yeah. did see is Carter Wolf being restrained by a couple of his teammates and uh, visibly angry about something as he was trying to get back into the uh, the middle so, of things. And Zach, uh, what does it mean when they're writing on their uh, pads there? So when they're writing on their pads, that means there's a there's a list of penalties, and we'll have it Resolve here. Kick is good. Dead ball. Personal foul. 65 white. Dead ball. Personal foul. First foul. 12. Goes offset. Personal foul. 22 will be enforced on the kickoff. So, so a lot of times what you'll see when they're all writing it down so it's on the same page, there's, there's a couple of things. First, it's for the head referee so he knows exactly where everything's at, what he has to announce. Then you're also saying, all right, because these are personal fouls, you need to write them down. So uh, there, there's the ejection rule. If you get the two personal fouls, you're out of the game. So that's used to track that as well. 5.49 left in tonight's football game. Crestview just opened up a 35-14 to 14 lead over the hometown Calvert Senecas. I mean, no doubt there's a lot of emotion out here for how Calvert season been and being down 35-14 with 5.49 left. And they want this game bad. It's... And that's exactly right. I mean, for a lot of these kids, this is uh, perhaps the last time they'll be on a football field. I certainly remember uh, my last high school game and, and, and the emotions surrounding that. And that's exactly, you know, the big part in all this. And so that's why we're not surprised when things might start to get chippy, especially uh, when you think about, all right, Calvert comes into this one as the higher-rated team. They have home field advantage. This is in front of the home Tiffin crowd. And again, it's just these kind of losses or, or these kind of scores, Back they hurt. Two, Jameson Godfrey. Uh, take a look at our Pyramid Jameson Recruiting Jameson. Services Jameson. scoreboard Jameson. rundown here. We've got 549 left in tonight's contest. Crestview with a 35 to 14 lead over Calvert. Uh, it appears Calvert has one uh, timeout here to to use, uh, and uh, we'll see uh, what they're able to come up with. Of course, uh, Harry Schultz uh, has done a very fine job throwing the ball here in the second half as he's helped the Calvert Senecas put up some points, but uh, tempers have flared here recently as a couple of penalties down there on the field. Uh, a lot of pushing and shoving, and uh, that's why you see such a short kickoff here for Crestview as they knock it into the back of the end zone. And we'll have a chance to see the Senecas come out. Coach Reeser, uh, I think he's just going to hand, uh, hand the ball over there to Schultz and see what he can come up with, see what they can do. Uh, I mean, look, you're down three scores. Just make something happen. Hey, exactly. So we're in a position where... Again, you've seen it a little bit, but you're going to start to spread things out, get Schultz on the move. It worked there on that last touchdown drive. All right, got Warneman in the backfield there, and Schultz throws it down the middle. Rumbach, the intended oh receiver, goodness. intercepted. Intercepted by Hunter Jones. What an insane interception. Let's take a look at this again, a one-handed Take a look at this, right over the middle. Good ball from Schultz, but reaches back to get it. Wow. I, it, that's all you can say is wow. I mean. There is nothing else to say. Everything's just gone the way of the Knights tonight. Knights take over first and 10 at the Seneca's 46 yard line. Yep, I, you know, great catch. Good, great catch indeed. <laughs> and again, if if the Knights can go down and score here, it's that's the nail in the coffin. 
And they keep the ball on the ground as uh, they're going to watch that clock go down as far as they can possibly get it. Let's take a look at that replay one more time. Or not. <laughs> we'll just do that. No, but again, the, we'll think about it. <laughs> that was a. It was just a fantastic one-handed grab to just tear it away from Jacob Rumbach, the intended receiver. It's not only that, but it's it's the reach all the way back. Going it Odell up, Beckham. Odell on that Beckham. Thing. Bat it up back to yourself, then find it midair once more. Is again, that is an insane display of athleticism. Isaac Klein carries the ball. No gain. That'll bring up third and long for Crestview. No gain on the play. Brings up third and ten for the Knights. And they'll get this ball, or excuse me, they'll get this clock inside of four minutes by the time they have to punt it away, of course, if they don't pick it up here. 430, then 15 left on the play clock. Pyramid Recruiting Services scoreboard update there. 424 and ticking. Crestview with a 35-14 lead here in the fourth quarter from Horniman Stadium on Heidelberg University's campus in Tiffin, Ohio. As Ren Sheets catches it and is pushed out of bounds. That is a generous spot there. Yeah, I first was down. Gonna say. It sure looked like he was close to the first, but not past the first. First and 10 for the Knights at the center. See, right here at the tail line. end, the replay doesn't do it justice. So the clock, 410, not going to continue going until the officials blow that whistle. Six seconds left on the play clock. Three, two. And hand it off to the athletic scat back, Isaac Klein. First down, Crestview. Number nine, Isaac Klein on the carry. Brought down by number 28, Jacob Rumback, and number four, Billy Klaus. Crestview's making it look easy here. So now, of course, if you're looking ahead, uh, so the winner of Crestview Calvert They'll move on to the next round of play here in the playoffs. And they're looking at the Lima Central Catholic football team or Defiance Ayersville. They're showing down right now. We'll see if we can dig up some scores on that one because the uh, winner of tonight's contest is going to take them on. Of course, uh, Calvert, they played Lima Central Catholic last year, lost in the first round. And two years ago, Crestville, Crestview. They also played LCC two years ago and uh, unable to beat them. So uh, I think either one of these teams would look forward to the opportunity for a little vengeance against LCC. I have here that LCC played Ayersville tonight, correct? Yep. Defiance yep. Ayersville. 42 to 20 LCC with the win. Well, there's your answer. Uh, right now, it's lining up with 2.45 left in the football game. It's lining up. Crestview and LCC will have a showdown in the number second nine, round of the playoffs. By number 57, Cameron Bajan. Of course, uh, another local team for us to keep an eye on, Hopewell Loudon, Plus taking on Mount Pelier. And uh, the winner of that football game, and I believe, Connor, you said Hopewell was winning. So they are finished with their game 46 to 14 win all right chieftains move on to the second round and they will be playing pandora gilboa with a 33 to 24 win over lip six so there that we will go be hopewell versus pandora in bascom next friday Oof. it's gonna be busy in bascom it's an old bbc matchup there you go Klein, another carry, getting close to the first Number down nine, marker there. The of course, the Heather Hunker, travel advisor with Magic Moments Vacations, keeping all of our travel plans up to date here as Connor <laughs> drops <laughs> in and helps keep us straight with our playoff bracket and all of tonight's playoff action. I've got a few more if you like. Yeah, absolutely. Lay it on us. So Colonel Crawford got the best of Seneca East tonight, 24 to 16. Mm, okay. We just got touchdown, touchdown Crestview. 
Uh, and then uh, Tiffin Colombian won tonight, 49 to 21. Good there you have it. Good to see a Tiffin team winning tonight. Yeah. Again, we'll... Isaac Klein, touchdown for Crestview, 14 yards, and now it's 41 to 14. I would say in, in all likelihood, we're probably back in Bascom next week, you think? I think I so. so. Yeah, probably. Yeah. That'll be a great matchup. With the, the A stream, of course, following Columbia. PAT's up and good. No pushing and shoving on this one. 42 to 14, Crestview, commanding lead over Calvert. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Unlock your peak performance with holistic pain management that soothes your brain and body. Say goodbye to inflammation and stress and hello to restful sleep, injury recovery, and more. Pulse Therapy, where wellness meets performance. Located at 205 Jefferson Street inside Meraki Salon and Barber, contact 567-230-4003 to book your session today. Tell them Heart of Ohio Sports sent you for $5 off your first visit. Klaus Electric is a veteran and family-owned full-service electrical contracting firm that has grown to be a first-class electrical contractor serving Northwest Ohio. Their mission is to provide high-quality commercial and industrial electrical projects in a timely manner. They do this by forming and training a professional team of employees who are dedicated to their core values, conscious of safe work practices, all while forming long-term relationships with their customers. Visit their website for more information at klauselectric.com. You're locked in to the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Heart of Ohio Sports. Welcome back to Tiffin, Ohio, here at Horniman Stadium on the campus, the beautiful campus of Heidelberg University. And Crestview, the visiting Crestview Knights have a 42-14 to lead over the hometown Calvert Senecas. We're about a minute 27 away from uh, the end of tonight's football game, and we've uh, started having some conversations up here in the booth. We've got our player of the game to, na uh, to name. Of course, uh, our player of the game co-sponsored by Placenite 3D Printing and Design, as well as Little Hugo's Ice Cream. Uh, so uh, we'll continue those conversations. Uh, we don't want to share everything just yet, uh, but uh, stay tuned for our player of the game. And, of course, our UIS insurance and investment post-game shows coming up right around the corner. We'll review tonight's action and preview some of the playoff scores and bracket and see how it's unfolded so far after one week of play. Godfrey, carry pushed out of bounds around the 34-yard line. First down for Seneca's. Ran into his own man there right at the end of the run. And number 82. Minute 18 left to go in the game. You know, at times like these, I think you need to, to reflect on the kind of season you had. It was, again, Calvert undefeated all the way up these last weeks. Get the pass out here to the right side. Oh, what a hit. And you've had you've had some great uh, Teddy Radisson with a catch. You, you've had some great individual and team efforts, obviously, throughout the year. Warnament, Rumbach, Schultz, Wolf, yep. Klaus. I mean, I mean, all your skill guys, but, but also you need to take a look at the big boys um, who are who are up front. Cameron Badgett, Wrecker. Moyer, both of them. Godfrey with a carry. He's got some space there. And Connor Moyer plowing the way as Godfrey goes across midfield, taken out about the 32-yard line. Player slow to get up off the turf there. Yes. Take a minute, just kind of look at these seniors. Jamison Godfrey, Billy Klaus, Harry Schultz, Teddy Radisson, Curtis Ream, Austin Ranieri, Jacob Rombach, of course, we've said his name a bunch tonight, Gavin Endauer, Wyatt Weicker, Lucas Recker, and Fabian Perez Ramirez. So, yeah, they had a uh, 
one heck of a football season this year. Uh, undefeated going into week 10. Showdown against their one of their close rivals there, Hopewell Loudon. Of course, the Chieftains able to walk away with a victory and a, a league title. Uh, Calvert coming into tonight ranked as the number two team in the region. They Just finished, a great season. They finished six in Division Seven as well. So yeah, that's good finish for them. Of course, uh, not the not the showing that you want to have here in Week Eleven. Good to see Levi Grace, first and ten for the Seneca, senior the linebacker, walking off. Got thirty-six seconds. Thirty-six and a half. Yeah, thirty-six point <laughs> five seconds left in tonight's football game. Again, stay tuned here, Heart of Ohio Sports. Uh, we're going to have your UIS insurance post-game show coming right around the corner. We unveil a really cool prize for our player of the game. Take a look at the playoffs, bracketology, live and in person. So much more here, Heart of Ohio Sports. Of course, Austin Ranieri. Nice little Harrison catch Schultz. and run. Pass is completed to number 23, Austin Ranieri. 23 seconds left. Final timeout Time for out Calvert. Calvert. Pick up a late on the play brings up a second and two for the Senecas. I mean, this was a dominating season for Calvert. I don't I know it was rough tonight and last and week, but the rest of, of their game. season, they they dominated their games. Had a, That's absolutely correct. They've done it in the run game. They've done it with their defense. They've done it in the passing game. Again, we'll just take a look at uh, the, the season so far. Week one, Mohawk beat them 14-12. to 12. That was probably a closer game than it ought to be. But, of course, that was kind of the story of, of Calvert's season, really. Monroeville was a good team. They won in overtime 35-34. St. Paul, they made the playoffs. Lakota made the playoffs. Gibsonburg. Playoff team. Margareta. Oh, they're right there, at Gibsonburg, least. Gibsonburg was right there. I, I believe they missed, right? Mont Montpelier took Gibsonburg's spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Because if Gibsonburg would have made it, they would have played Hopewell. Nah, okay. Still a playoff quality team. Schultz, pressure, tosses it. Klaus, through his hands, no good. Uh, then you pick up Schultz Margareta. That's a playoff team. team. They won commanding fashion. Woodmore, Willard, or excuse me, uh, uh, Willard, uh, and then, of course, Hopewell, and, and now Crestview. Is a look at that. They were one game short. They had a cancellation against St. Joe. Correct. When I, when I talked to Coach Reeser, they, they were kind of disappointed not to play because that's just another game being played. But, yeah, they were wishing they played that one. Incomplete pass, Ranieri, the intended receiver. Harrison Schultz's pass. 14 for seconds. Ranieri falls incomplete. Brings up a Again, two for the Senecas. Trying to send these seniors out on a good note. You see that conversation there between Schultz, Caden Drake. Great to see Austin Ranieri, the senior, out there getting some catches. Of course, you got Billy Klaus, Schultz. Scrambles, pressure, three white jerseys trying to chase him down. Throws it away, knocked down, incomplete. And with seven seconds, Crestview's going to get the football back, and that should just about do it here from Tiffin, Ohio. Great season's going to come to an end for the Calvert Senecas as Crestview is going to walk away from tonight's contest with a 42 to 14 victory. And they're gonna advance and play LCC next week. See that conversation there between Reeser and Schultz. And again, you know, Schultz did everything he could tonight. Reeser called a good game, but one knee and that promising season comes to an end.
Great season. Good. Congrats, congrats to Calvert. I mean, tough, but don't put your, don't hit your heads down low. Final score here from Tiffin, Ohio. Crestview 42, Calvert 14. We'll be right back with our post-game show. Don't go anywhere. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. Unlock your peak performance with holistic pain management that soothes your brain and body. Say goodbye to inflammation and stress and hello to restful sleep, injury recovery, and more. Pulse Therapy, where wellness meets performance. Located at 205 Jefferson Street inside Meraki Salon and Barber, contact 567-230-4003 to book your session today. Tell them Heart of Ohio Sports sent you for $5 off your first visit. Klaus Electric is a veteran and family-owned full-service electrical contracting firm that has grown to be a first-class electrical contractor serving Northwest Ohio. Their mission is to provide high-quality commercial and industrial electrical projects in a timely manner. They do this by forming and training a professional team of employees who are dedicated to their core values, conscious of safe work practices, all while forming long-term relationships with their customers. Visit their website for more information at klauselectric.com. You're locked into the best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. Heart of Ohio Sports. You're watching Heart of Ohio Sports as uh, the Calvert Senecas uh, have fallen to the Crestview Knights 42 to 14 here in the first round of the OHSAA playoffs. I'm Dominic Helmstetter, Zach Dillon here, joining me up in the booth. Uh, of course, we're on the campus here at Heidelberg University, uh, where uh, Calvert hosted their home playoff game and a disappointing end to what was a great season by the Senecas as uh, 42 to 14 is how it ends. And Zach, um, you know, just kind of looking through here, I can't help but think that uh, kind of the story tail of the tape here is that the Calvert offense just could not get it going in the first half. They couldn't rush the ball. Uh, they were not in a rhythm passing it. And uh, second half heroics were just a little too little, a uh, little late. Yeah, credit, to, again, I've said it all night, but credit to this Crestview defense. They looked uh, just immaculate. Uh, Hunter Jones, Kellen Putman, um, other guys on here too. Isaac Klein was in there, um, and then and then some of your big boys up front. But as we try to get this player of the game interview going again, it was just dominating stuff from the the night side of the football. Uh, of course, if you take a rundown uh, tonight's score. Uh, we had a couple turnovers swapped there in the first quarter, but uh, first quarter ended with Penix, uh, Crestview's quarterback, picking up a touchdown run. That was seven to zero, and then uh, you had Sauer coming in with a twenty-yard touchdown catch, fourteen to zero. Then Eggleston with a three-yard touchdown run, to make it twenty to zero at halftime. And then Schultz and the gang started putting up some points, making it a little bit sporting. But then it was number thirty-two Braxton Leaf who just kind of took control, and he put up yards all game long. He had a six-yard touchdown run in the third quarter. He had a five-yard touchdown run in the fourth quarter. And really, uh, it was just, that was the game, 42-14, Crestview all the way. Uh, it, we'll take a look here at some of the stats. We'll start with rushing. Jamison Godfrey, two rushes, 43 yards. Warnament, nine attempts, 20 yards. Schultz, three Picks up seven and a touchdown. And then Rombach, again, five carries, four yards, two fumbles. And Klaus, count his as a, a rush yard for negative four. On the flip side of that, Braxton Leith ran all over the field. 23 attempts, 172 yards, two touchdowns. Followed that with Klein, who was nine carries, 52 yards. Penix, 12 for 35 yards with a touchdown and a fumble from the quarterback position. Bo Eggleston also picked up a touchdown, passing the ball. Penix, again, he was 13 for 23, 144 yards, a touchdown, no picks, clean game from the quarterback number five. And then Calvert, Harry Schultz, 
17 for 37, 174 yards, one touchdown, one interception. You're watching our UIS Insurance and Investments post-game show here at Heart of Ohio Sports. Uh, Crestview 42-14 victory over the hometown Calvert Senecas here from Tiffin, Ohio on the beautiful campus of Heidelberg University uh, and uh, convincing fashion there. You just you hear some of those stats and it's just kind of unreal uh, to think uh, that uh, after what was a great season, it's just it's over right now. Uh, so uh, we're going to take a short break here as uh, Connor Roush is going to be bringing up our player of the game here. Of course, our player of the game brought to you by Placenite 3D Printing and Design, as well as Little Hugo's Ice Cream. We'll be right back in a moment, and we're going to talk some football. Hey, it's, it's your boys, boys, Dominic and Connor, and, and we're, we're chilling, chilling with, with Zach Dillon here on Heart, Heart of Ohio, Ohio Sports. Sports. Placenite where imagination meets innovation. Unleash your creativity with precision 3D printing. Your ideas, our expertise. Placenite, your 3D printing partner. At Heart of Ohio Sports, it's obvious. The first thing that comes to mind is sports. But we do a lot more than just cover live sporting events. When we want to watch our highlights from last night's game, there's only one place we go, Heart of Ohio Sports. Little Hugo's is Tiffin's longest running ice cream store in operation since 1949. A local family owned business, you know them because of those famous shredded chicken sandwiches and their delicious fresh lemon slushes. Stop by today and take advantage of their convenient drive through where you're sure to find something for the whole family to enjoy at Little Hugo's on West Market Street in Tiffin. Heart of Ohio Sports gives fans the access they want when they want it. And the athletes get the coverage they deserve. Our broadcasts are free and they always will be. We don't hide behind the paywall. When my family can't come to the games, they always watch on Heart of Ohio Sports. I'm Zach Dillon and you're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. All right. All right, welcome back. Audio? Yep. All right, welcome back here, uh, Tiffin, Ohio. Uh, I've got joining me here, uh, Braxton Leith. Uh, Braxton, uh, first off, congratulations on a huge victory. It's got to feel good. Playoffs, uh, what, what's the coach been saying? I mean, coach is just really proud of us. We've been working hard at practice, and, I mean, this was the number two seed. Go. All right, so uh, I don't know if you uh, you've – you know this or not, but next week you guys take on Lima Central Catholic. Um, uh, you're ready to go to battle against them? Oh, yeah, for sure. We're going to work hard this week. We're going to fix some things. And, uh, I mean, we're going to go out and battle. Absolutely. Playoff football can't go wrong there. Uh, Braxton Leith, our player of the game, brought to you by Placenite 3D Printing and Little Hugo's Ice Cream. And, of course, uh, Braxton, we've got, a, we got a, little, uh, a little prize for you here from our sponsors. Of course, uh, our Heart of Ohio Sports player of the game, he gets this fine little trophy here, as well as a uh, Little Hugo's uh, gift certificate. So, uh, first off, congratulations again, Braxton. Good luck next week against LCC, and uh, hey, go get them. All right, thank you. Hey, thanks a lot. Enjoy it. All right, uh, we'll be back right in a moment here uh, from uh, Tiffin, Ohio. Hey, it's your boys, Dominic and Connor, and, and we're, we're chilling, chilling with, with Zach Dillon here on Heart, Heart of Ohio, Ohio Sports. Placenite, where imagination meets innovation. Unleash your creativity with precision 3D printing. Your ideas, our expertise. Placenite, your 3D printing partner. At Heart of Ohio Sports, it's obvious. The first thing that comes to mind is sports. But we do a lot more than just cover live sporting events.
and we want to watch our highlights from last night's game, there's only one place we go, Heart of Ohio Sports. Little Hugo's is Tiffin's longest running ice cream store in operation since 1949. A local family owned business, you know them because of those famous shredded chicken sandwiches and their delicious fresh lemon slushes. Stop by today and take advantage of their convenient drive through where you're sure to find something for the whole family to enjoy at Little Hugo's on West Market Street in Tiffin. Heart of Ohio Sports gives fans the access they want when they want it. And the athletes get the coverage they deserve. Our broadcasts are free, and they always will be. We don't hide behind a paywall. When my family can't come to the games, they always watch on Heart of Ohio Sports. I'm Zach Dillon, and you're watching Heart of Ohio Sports. You're watching our UIS Insurance uh, post-game show here from Tiffin, Ohio. Uh, we're at Horniman Stadium on beautiful campus of Heidelberg University uh, where Crestview had a commanding 42-14 to victory over Calvert Seneca's. Uh, so, gentlemen, uh, playoff time. Let's kind of look around the area. And we were talking the uh, – so Crestview, they're going to move on to the second round of play. And they're going to be taking on Lima Central Catholic. And uh, we had a chance to see them last season. Uh, and uh, they had a really tough team. But they also had some seniors kind of graduated and moved on. So uh, I'm not sure if you had a chance to look into them at all. That's uh, be kind of an interesting matchup. Uh, they were dominant last year versus Calvert. So again, we've saw we've seen them before. So so the the Knights are going to have their their work cut out for them next week. They're one of those squads too, to where they don't they don't lose. They just keep continuing season after season, having the Rebuild. dominant football. And Braxton Leith, our player of the game here, uh, he was talking uh, last time two years ago when Crestview played LCC in the playoffs. He's like, yeah, I, I was a manager on the team. This is this is personal. I mean, it means something. I'm like, oh man. Uh, so Crestview, they're going to bring everything that they've got. Just like they brought it tonight. And as we mentioned with our post game interview, I think maybe some people just overlooked them because they were the 15th seed. And that's exactly what they said. I mean, in that interview, he said, "Hey, the coach said one more week. That's yeah. all we need. Just one more week. We can go far. We're a good football team." And and coming into this one, I they mean, showed it. Reeser, Connor, you got the opportunity to talk with Reeser uh, before the game in an interview. Uh, what did he say about this matchup? Because I knew he knew it was going to be a tough one. Yeah, he knew it was going to be a tough battle, but they knew they had to turn around last week's loss real quick and come into this game uh, with full force because you can't just solely look at teams based off of their record and where they're placed. I mean, it's all pretty much reset. You got the best 16 teams in, and they knew, especially from the past, playing these uh, this team in 2020 and 2016, that they're going to have their hands full with this uh, with this team. All right, so let's look at a few of the other matchups here because, of course, uh, our season with Calvert is done, uh, and uh, we're looking ahead where we could possibly uh, follow Hopewell Loudon, which we had a chance to watch last week. Uh, Connor, you already mentioned Hopewell Loudon. They took care of business in a big way. Uh, they got their victory. They're moving on to the second round, uh, and they're going to be taking on Pandora Gilboa. Yes, they will. They had a win. They had a win tonight over Lipsick, thirty-three to twenty-four, and those are two very good teams. So you can't overlook Pandora Goboa. They will come out. They will fight. The BVC produces really strong teams, so it will be a hard-fought battle next week. Uh, should be a fun, fun game there in Bascom, Ohio. And uh, I mean, look, Connor. Uh, that's your hometown team. Just kind of describe what what's it going to be like in Bascom this week. They've undefeated 
league champions. They got a commanding victory in the first round. They're going to be pretty excited. I mean, it's it's awesome. I mean, postseason play back in Bascom these last few years. Uh, and you know how it was when we were over there last week against Calvert, and that yep. was a rival game. Now add postseason to it, and it's going to be the last home game of this season regardless in Bascom. So you can guarantee a full house there and fans just showing their support for that Chieftain team over there. And it's not just the, the fans in the stands. It's the fans across the river Having the bonfire, yes. tailgating. <laughs> I mean, Bascom goes yeah. crazy Friday night, so you can expect a great atmosphere next week. Oh, playoff football is amazing in Ohio. All right, gentlemen, uh, let's go around. Parting shots for tonight. Uh, what stood out? Uh, what are you excited about next week? I mean, tonight, what really stood out to me was uh, was Crestview's defense. I mean, the way that they were able to stop Kelvert's run game, and I think that really changed how Kelvert was going to uh, attack them offensively. So with their defense, that's what stood out to me the most. And for me, we followed this Calvert team uh, this year pretty closely, and I think you have to take a moment and, and acknowledge the seniors that have made this uh, incredible season up to this point work, right? And, and so it's it's important to take a moment and, and just look back and reflect and say, hey, we had a great run. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, I think the biggest thing that stood out to me, the physicality that Crestview brought to this football game uh, really, really got Calvert out of the flow of the game right from the beginning because their offense, it's predicated on run to open up the pass, and immediately they were forced to pass to open up the run, and it just doesn't work. That's not how their offense operates. I think that physicality, that was a huge eye-opener for me as they just kind of uh, knocked Calvert around for the first half of the game and uh, it just... That was that was everything right there for me. I mean, really, this Crestview team, I'm not going to be surprised if they're a Final Four team. I mean, they play yeah, like it. They strong. look like it. They've got the heart. They've got the power. Uh, it's They're one of those teams that can get it done. Okay. All right. Well, from Tiffin, Ohio, here on Heidelberg's campus, Crestview 42-14 to over the Calvert Senecas. For Connor Rausch, for Zach Dillon, I'm Dominic Helmstetter. Thank you for watching our UIS postgame show uh, here at Heart of Ohio Sports. Hopefully, we'll see you next week.